Not only on October 7th last year, people were taken hostage by Hamas, but also 10 years earlier, Hadar Golden was kidnapped and later murdered by Hamas terrorists. His body is still in Gaza, and Hadar's family has been fighting for almost 10 years to get his body back. At my table, Leah Goldin, Hadar's mother, and Chemi, his brother. Both welcome, and thank you for coming to our studio. To start with you, uh, Leah, you are now visiting uh, the Netherlands together with your son, Chemi. What is the purpose of your visit? Hadar's art exhibition that is now presented here at the, at the, in the Israel of, Center, uh, yes. Christian for Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is an ongoing uh, project of exhibition that started a year after Adar was uh, killed and kidnapped. Mm -hmm. He left us with an amazing legacy, art, art uh, of art, uh, that we presented around the world. And just before COVID-19, it was uh, at the European Parliament mm -hmm. in Strasbourg. Yes. Uh, and now no, it's here in it's the Israel here. Center. Yeah. 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 yeah, Chemi, this morning, uh, because you're not only visiting the Israel Center now that you're in the Netherlands, but this morning you went to, to The Hague to meet with a few uh, Dutch members of parliament. No, um, yes, because uh, with Hadar, as you've mentioned, uh, we are kind of the veteran mm -hmm. uh, family. Uh, with a kidnapped brother mm -hmm. and a kidnapped child. You mean veteran because you were already because for a long we time. are uh, we have this issue of uh, Hamas uh, in Gaza kidnapping uh, people and keeping them hostage, uh, and that issue has uh, started basically with uh, in 2014 with uh, my brother, mm -hmm. uh, his uh, fellow soldier Oren Shaul. Then it went on to two other civilians. Mm -hmm. And now after the 7th of October, I've become not only uh, the older brother of, uh, of my of a kidnapped brother, mm -hmm. but now I have many, many more brothers and sisters uh, because after the 7th of October, uh, hundreds. Actually, hundreds of hostages in Gaza. Uh, we have now mm -hmm. a situation of hundreds of hostages yeah. in Gaza. Uh, hundreds of Israelis, um, whether they are soldiers, elderly, babies, mm -hmm. uh, they are being kept there. Yeah, because we're here to talk especially about your son, about your brother. What kind of person was Hadar? Well, he was my little brother. How, many, how much age difference is there's there? There's eight years, eight years between us, so it's a lot, but uh, we're talking about Hadar. But my parents uh, gave me two brothers, I mean, the twins. Mm -hmm. So I had uh, Hadar and Tzur, mm -hmm. uh, and they were known to be the twins. Mm -hmm. So as uh, a big brother, I loved them a lot, but um, they knew how to, you know, destroy my Lego, uh, <laughs> of course, that's pick what up a do. fight yeah. and do a lot of things and to make me laugh. Yeah. Now, uh, but Hadar in that sense, my brother Hadar, um, uh, he was an artist, he was a painter, mm -hmm. he loved to do capoeira. Uh, I think he loved life. And um, to be honest, the last time I saw him was just before I was uh, on his um, engagement party. Hmm. So he was, it was about. He was recently engaged. He okay. was recently engaged. He was mm. supposed to be married within a month. Mm. And unfortunately, that didn't happen. No. So he's my brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In all respects. Yeah, I heard you laughing when he was talking about his little twin brothers destroying the Lego. What is your memory of Hadar? What, what? What is your memories of Hadar? If you think back about him as a, as a boy, as your son. Memory? Um, it's not just one memory. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of memories because he had this uh, those skill to make us laugh. Mm -hmm. Even it was the most tense situation in a tense situation in family. He had this way of showing us to the right place mm -hmm. and forget about uh, 
uh, the tense and start laughing. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a real skill. Like the smile on the picture that yeah. we have here. Yeah. yeah, you can see it's not an outside mm -hmm. smile, it's an inside uh, right. smile. Yeah. yeah. So if we go back to the 1st of August 2014, this was during the, the Operation Protective uh, Edge, an operation of Israel uh, in Gaza, and your brother was also in Gaza. Can you take us back to that moment? What happened? Well, two of my brothers, mm -hmm. the twins, were both officers in the Israeli army, yeah. and they declared a ceasefire. Uh, and that needs to be said because my brother is not the victim of a war as he is a victim of a ceasefire. Mm -hmm. You mean um, that during the ceasefire he was captured? It was, he seized his fire. Mm -hmm. My, um, um, on the 1st of August, they've decided that they would stop the fire, and there would be a ceasefire in order to make progress mm -hmm. in all respects. Um, and Hamas didn't obey the ceasefire. So uh, my brother had put his weapon down, Hamas didn't. And actually, my brother, in his uh, obedience to the international community, to a ceasefire brokered by the UN and by the US, by everyone, he got killed, kidnapped, and is still in Gaza to this day. So on the 1st of uh, August, actually, when we were told, uh, we all came home. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother actually said that uh, he is kidnapped, and we spend the Shabbat. It was a Friday, mm -hmm. so we spend the Shabbat actually um, calling out for everyone. We got letters from the, the Pope. We got, uh, uh, we got all the press. We went down, and we said then what we are saying still now. The most important thing is to bring our soldiers back and not to have a case of hostages. Right, so exactly. So that was, yeah. that was uh, then. And it's been an ongoing journey. Since then? Ever yeah. since. When was the moment that you realized Adar is not alive anymore? Well, after the Shabbat, um, um, officers from the army came and said that according to forensic evidence, uh, the, chance that the, the chances that, he, that he's alive are very low. Mm. But to make it clear, um, <laughs> we got his uniform, his clothes. And uh, and I'm saying it as a Jew, mm -hmm. uh, that does not allow to do the proper respect uh, for a person who died. So that's the message, that's what we got. And as my father said, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't bring out uh, the dead, you will betray the, um, the wounded. <coughs> and at the end, they will get them and kidnap them alive. Right. So and so, you say it's so th I'm saying this on 2014, and mm -hmm. speaking after the 7th of October, it's it's it's, it's, it's a awful. great shock. Of it's course. an awful, yeah, it's awful. yeah. Um, when you heard this news, eh, that he was uh, kidnapped, <coughs> that uh, you also later heard that he wasn't alive anymore, how was this? This is your younger brother. How was how was it for you? Um, there's a moment in time that stops. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my, um, my feeling. Yeah. I mean, I, there is a chemi before and chemi after. Mm -hmm. There is a, there's a very famous a song, poem in Israel, that a part of you stays there. Yeah, and that's what happened. Um, that when someone dies, a part of you dies with him. Yeah. Um, but, <coughs> and as we said, with this art exhibition, um, my brother left us his art, drawings and paintings and on every piece of paper, on t-shirts and, you know, and canvas and everything. So uh, when people ask me, I'm saying we are four brothers. Yeah. Uh, so in that sense, my uh, brother is still with me. Yeah, through the art in every, and through the memories. Through the art, through the memories. Yeah. Yeah. Leah, when we were preparing this interview, you told me that for you it's very hard eh, to go back to that moment when you heard about the abduction, that you heard that your son was killed, and that it makes it also hard to, get, to make an interview. But uh, let's talk about afterwards, because you heard he's abducted, you got letters from the Pope, from all 
important people around the world supporting you. How did you give uh, meaning to your life after you heard this? Yeah. Simple answers. The meaning is adding a new project mm -hmm. called the Hadar project to all that I've been doing beforehand. <clears throat> the feeling is is running uh, with a knife stuck in your heart mm -hmm. because uh, soon after uh, it happened, I yelled it my elder daughter, mm -hmm. she actually um, defined us as a bereaved hostage family. Yeah. And in Hebrew, it's, it's not, it's hostage. I like, we are, we are hostages by, by yeah. the, this whole thing. The family. Uh, as a family, yeah. uh, because we have to invent all our, invent all our energy mm. to bring him home and don't have um, any, any bit of energy to, to, to cry. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the situation. Now, first of all, we decided to continue our work, um, our normal work. But on, to on, on top of this, we start our journey to the international arena, mm -hmm. to the UN, to the US, to the EU, to those that were responsible for the ceasefire. And very soon we learned that the law is is on our side, mm -hmm. you know, and <clears throat> but it's different. It's a huge gap between having the law on your side and having it implemented and bringing it down home. And and as you see, we are still still ten, in the same almost thing. ten yeah. years yeah. afterwards. You are still and, not having your and, and the more frustrating thing is to see that after October seventh. Mm -hmm. They, it's the same, like talking again about the ceasefire yeah. and the hostages are not there now. Last week there was a, a, a European Parliament resolution mm -hmm. calling for a ceasefire, permanent ceasefire, provided that all the hostages are back. And this is actually referred to the, all the resolution mm -hmm. we have managed to achieve as a yeah. family. Yeah. But, uh, uh, we're going to talk about 7th October and what happened then later, but, uh, Tell me about the, these 10 years of fight that you had. You, you tried to release the body of your so, uh, son from Gaza. Uh, what, what things did you do? Yeah. Um, you went to the first UN, of all, you said? Yeah, yeah, first of all, uh, the reaction was, um, there is nothing to do, they are terrorists. Mm. So we in the Goldie family do not accept this kind of, of uh, reaction mm -hmm. because this is my, my son and we are going to bring him home. This is our promise and this is the state promise. No, no soldiers are left behind. So uh, then we, we, uh, we were told that it's, it's against the humanitarian law because seeing all those lorries going into Gaza with goodies, like thousands of lorries every day, with merchandise mm -hmm. and businesses as usual, was very frustrating uh, because we, we would like to see Gaza like Singapore next mm -hmm. to us, you know? But first bring my son, hostages uh, home, it's my son Hadar and Doron Shaul, another story, and two civilians that were put in this Yeah, you say package. that people have to be more firm about it. First release the hostages and then... Uh, but this is all the Golden family is saying, mm -hmm. and all the rest of them were sitting back and acting and do as business as usual, yeah. explaining us that this is the humanitarian support and you, not, you cannot stop it, mm -hmm. according to you, the international humanitarian law. But this is wrong. Hmm. This is wrong because yeah. the humanitarian, uh, international humanitarian law is not that, uh, that, that uh, uh, a commit to the uh, humanitarian imperative. <clears throat> it specifically states that the ones that get it have to comply with the principles of the law in order to get it. So it's illegal to provide yeah. humanitarian support to those that violate the law. Right, which is for uh, us which is Hamas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this was the argument, mm -hmm. but being non, non, um, uh, we are not expert, not, not in the international uh, um, uh, law. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so uh, we, first of all, a lot of, uh, uh, we got a lot of uh, support from professional people. So we have experts consulting us. 
and the main figure is Professor Erwin Kotler, previous mm -hmm. uh, justice minister in Canada, well human rights activist. And he, and, he helped and, you. And mm -hmm. with him, actually, mm -hmm. he, he did the legal framing of the case and cause mm -hmm. of Hadar Goldin, humanitarian case. So this was right, I mean, in terms of, of, of legal point of view. And that, since then, we traveled the world to convince, because every time there was an armed conflict in Israel, yeah. this was an opportunity. Right. Because it says, we, according to, to the UN Security Council resolution, that after an armed conflict, whenever the good countries, the UN state member, initiate agreements, they are responsible to return the missing person and the dead as a confidence right, so building measure to any agreement. So then there would be a chance Cease to release fire. Hadar. Yeah, yeah. Ceasefire, peace yeah. agreement, commercial agreement. Mm. So now we found ourselves actually confronting the, the business, yeah. the business because Humanitarian support is, a, is, a, is the title, but underneath it, there is a lot of business going on mm -hmm. and political interests. Right. So this is too, too big and too difficult for one family. Yeah, so it's, it's also obst an obstacle to the release of uh, your brother, uh, Chemi. Um, is it frustrating for you and your family that it's taking already for su such a long time and still your brother is not home yet? It's frustrating for two reasons. First mm -hmm. of all, emotionally and psychologically, because, yeah. you know, I couldn't um, get my brother alive and you can't bury him. So it's very frustrating. You cannot get a closure, you mean? Exactly. Yeah. I cannot get a closure, and I'm speaking also as a religious Jew. Uh, burying someone is a very basic right, human right and religious right. So, But apart from that, and I think that the, the frustration was that in not taking any measures against Hamas, in allowing Hamas to keep hostages mm -hmm. and do business as usual, it was actually like institutionalizing, um, keeping hostages. Yeah. That it's okay. It was socially accepted, so to it, say. It becomes, and I think that was uh, infuriating. Mm -hmm because that's the, the basics of terror. I mean, psychologically and like tearing, uh, turning uh, the picture upside down and slowly, slowly accepting the idea that yes, terrorist organization in Gaza can keep hostages and business is as usual. Yeah. And let's hope it won't happen again. So it was on a personal note, a human note, uh, as it is my brother, and it was on a broader scale, uh, seeing this process of uh, actually uh, giving consent that it's okay, yeah. rather than being, right. rather than hostages being, uh, releasing of hostages mm -hmm. would be a precondition to everything. But I can imagine, uh, I'm not meaning this in a cynical way, but that the leaders of the UN or the EU would say two million Gazans, one family, then the choice is easily made. Do we make all the efforts for the one family or do we give the help to the two million Gazans? Uh, so let's put it this way. Is it? What's the connection between providing food and releasing hostages? Mm -hmm. What's the connection between giving food, releasing hostages and sending billions upon billions of dollars of salary for a terrorist. Mm -hmm. What's the connection between giving food and sending money to build uh, not only the bank accounts of Hamas members, but creating an underworld tunnel system to keep a one-year-old child? Yeah. So sometimes dilemmas are excuses. Mm. There is no connection. No. no connection whatsoever. Um, me being an Israeli, I work with the 
Palestinians, with Arabs. Uh, we are friends, we are colleagues. Uh, I don't think the Palestinians uh, want to be conceived throughout Hamas, like if that's going to be their portrait. I don't think they want to be people who keep hostages. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, okay, so now Hamas can starve them, he can take their money, he can build underwater tunnels, and he can kidnap because we worry about the people. It's so not it's a dilemma. It's a question, a question of it's principle, a, you're saying. It's, not a, it's a question, it's a, a very rational thing. Mm -hmm. What's the connection? Mm. There is no connection. No. And uh, there is a difference, a very big difference between terror and about when you're having a state and when you're having an army and you're doing your actions, you have responsibility. Mm. But when you have terrorist organization, you don't call yourself a state and you say, okay, fine, so just give me the money and we'll go on. Yeah. That's a threat that has nothing to do with even remotely no. supporting anyone mm -hmm. or giving them a future. Right. Leah, what about uh, the state of Israel? Did they support you in your mission to get Hadar home? No. Our biggest frustration is to see that what happened to us uh, the acts and the doings to return Hadar actually are the same uh, concerning 250 hostages. Mm. Um, and I don't believe in doing the same and expecting different results. I mean, the fact that there were 250 and more than 100 were, were released, uh, children and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, mothers, uh, I appreciate that, but it's actually the decision of Hamas, not the decision of, of, of Israelis or any other entity. You mean they decided who to release? They it's, release it, we play to their own tunes, and they, they, uh, Khaled Mashal was interviewed a couple of days after uh, October 7, saying we will release the, the, the civilians and keep mm -hmm. the, the soldiers and, yeah. and send them to Iran. So it's, it's not something that was really done to bring all hostages home, no. and using the, the and what terror does is what does what's done in in very uh, black, dark days. It's called selection. I mean, p kids, uh, children, and then and then, and then soldiers, and then uh, fallen uh, dead people. No, this is wrong. We must, some, something has to be done differently in order to defeat the terror. Yeah. Because, and the, to defeat them is to turn the hostages being uh, with the, these terrorists from an asset to a burden, to yeah. a liability. What do you mean by that? First of all, uh, as we talk and they hold hostages, this is for them uh, used as a bargaining ship to blackmail ev the whole world, not just Israel, to really sentence terrorists and, and to get more money and everything. To turn it to a burden means something uh, to, to let them lose, lose from the fact that they hold hostages. Mm -hmm. this, is, this means to be a stakeholder, you yeah. know, to, to win or lose from that. And uh, as long as they just win from having this asset, mm -hmm. we and are in big trouble. Yeah. Now turning it upside mm -hmm. down means we look for ways. So the fact that it's like kids, you know? Uh, I mean, this is how you, you, you educate um, um, children. Uh, children to obey. You don't punch them. It's not allowed anymore nowadays. <laughs> but, but however, you make them lose something so they will do better next time. And if you think it this way to flip the equation, it's, it's to change your attitude. To, to what they do. And so what should, what should be the attitude of Israel towards uh, I'm or not the talking world, about or the world towards uh, it's, the, it's a world, it's a humanitarian yeah. problem. Yeah. It, because they can do the same with all the Islamic centers yeah. all over in Germany and here, and you know the problem better than me yeah. about the, the extremist, mm -hmm. you know? You need just one or two to do these kind of acts. It's, course, it's yeah. not, and it, it, it's, it's awful. Yeah. So uh, the issue is actually to cut, 
cut the oxygen to this mm -hmm. terror. You mean cut uh, And the oxygen to this terror is, is provided by those that enable it. Mm -hmm. And now, who enables is, is first, to, 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 it, is, it, it depends on money. It depends on money, everything. Money makes the world go around. And it starts with the humanitarian support yeah. that gets to the wrong hand and it's already pro proved. So this should be double checked mm -hmm. according to the law and the, to the uh, UN Security um, Resolution 2474 and all of them. Mm -hmm. And say, oh, uh, first you have to return all the hostages because you, at this sad state you are in a standing violation. We cannot help you because we will, do, the good ones will do illegal things. Mm -hmm. Now, the second thing is to look for, for the illegal money. And it's, it was published in the, in the New York Times last week about the, the money chain, the Hamas money chain, that had bank accounts of their, their uh, senior uh, terrorists, that Ichis Anwar, obviously, but those that live in Qatar as a free person, yeah. and um, in Turkey and all other places. And this should be cut in through all this junction yeah. that use illegal things like art sellers, like changers, yeah. and, and all those in each country that deal so, with counterterrorism. Yeah. They have the data and they just have to send the police to cut it. Yeah, so you say that funding is the most important weapon that, that the world uh, not, has? Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. And you can see bombs can mm -hmm. help to destroy infrastructure, but we pay but not the a lot and a lot of soldiers are dead and it's awful. Mm -hmm. We need a ceasefire. Yeah. But now as you approach it, now the precondition is first release those hostages. Yeah. <clears throat> and we need the whole world calling for a ceasefire, but, not, but create the link that precondition is release all hostages dead and alive. And, and for gradually. that, yeah. stop the money, yeah. which stop the money. It's not stop the money, it's precondition it. And this means that it will send them a clear message that since October 7, it's not just two families and the, gold, the crazy Goldens. It's a problem. And it's we are a, not going to accommodate it anymore. Yeah. And this should be uh, the f uh, like they use like a <clears throat> case study, a most urgent one, because every day they murder yeah. the hostages, like a, a test case, mm -hmm. you know, to show that if we do other things, we can control, we can influence, and you can live according to our values and laws like be, be given to, to terror uh, acts. Yeah, right. I'm, oh, we are almost getting to a finish, but I want to ask you, Remy, um, what would be your message to the people who are watching this interview? What can we do to support your cause and the cause of all the families of, uh, that are kept uh, hostage so, in Gaza? So the first message is to look to your children in the eyes, to look around and ask yourself, is hostages okay? Mm -hmm. Is by tomorrow your neighbor will be allowed to kidnap someone and hold them because someone told them it's okay mm -hmm. or whatever. So that's the message. It's not just us or just Israelis. There is now a situation in which keeping hostages is becoming okay. So that's the mes message about what we're going to do is, is to say, and it's a rational thing, and I think it's, it's an emotional thing, it's a human thing, to say that we are humans. Humans don't keep hostages, and you can't be humanitarian if you create a society or create an organization that keep hostages. Mm -hmm. So, as my mother said, in order to be a better world, in order to keep our society and our very fundamental issue, that's why we need states to protect our children, hostages must be out of the question, precondition to everything. And if you ever want to speak us, to us about humanitarian needs, first of all, hostages. it's in your hands. Yeah. They are, they the hostages are in civil society in Gaza. Yeah. Take them. Yeah. 
bring them back. But what can you we don't do? have to be part of it. What, what can we do? We as normal citizens of the Netherlands. So first of all, I, I think that you need to support our cause. I think that as uh, Netherlands, you need to approach your, um, your government. Mm -hmm. You need to approach your government. And apart from saying this, asking the questions, because tomorrow it's going to be Netherlands. Mm. When we are dealing with all those countries, you know, from uh, uh, Iran, uh, Qatar, all those places that we get in class and we're doing mm. business with, and when we're sending off kind of money all around the world, when is it... Who is it going to? Mm -hmm. Are they supporting uh, uh, organizations that keep on hostages? Mm. How is that legal? So we have to speak up. So you have, speak first up. of all, to speak yeah. up Loud. and yeah. ask the Loud. questions. Yeah. Because today it's us, and the next day it's someone else. Yeah, It's a sad message, but thank you for sharing, and thank you also for coming to our studio. And we hope, of course, that many people will take action and contact the MPs contact the government and uh, fight for your cause. Thank you for this interview, uh, Gemi Goldin and Lea Goldin, and also for coming to our center here in Nijkerk. And thank you for watching, and you can stay involved with the work of Christians for Israel. Go to our website for more information and uh, news facts about Israel. Thank you again for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>